Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Instax Mini 40, the latest instant camera to use Fujifilm's enormously popular Instax Mini Film. Launched in April 2021 and costing $99 or £89, the Mini 40 produces small prints using a fully analog process where the paper emerges immediately after you take the shot and the image gradually fades into view roughly 90 seconds later. No need to shake it either. All Instax Mini cameras use the same Instax Mini film cartridges which contain 10 prints and cost around $15 or pounds for a twin pack so that works out around 75 cents or pence per print. Large packs are also available and sometimes work out a bit cheaper, and Fujifilm also sells a variety with different border styles if you fancy it, as well as fully monochrome packs for fans of black and white photography. Instax mini prints are roughly business card sized, with the actual picture measuring 2.4 by 1.8 inches or 62 by 48 mil, leaving a little more room on one side for writing a note or a caption. The new Mini 40 slots roughly between the Mini 11 and Mini 70 in price, although older models often enjoy greater discounting so do keep an eye open for bargains. In terms of design, the Mini 40 is closer to the vintage style of the Mini 70 and 90, steering away from the cuter but inevitably more toy-like looks of the Mini 11. So it's out with the Mini 11's generous curves, choice of pastel colours and smooth finish, and in with sharper angles and a classy looking, albeit not rubberized, black textured finish with silver detailing. If you're into that vintage aesthetic, the Mini 40 gives it to you at a lower price than the 70 and 90. Fujifilm also sells an optional case for the Mini 40 which continues the retro style. But while the Mini 40 shares some of the looks of the 70 and 90, don't expect their extended feature set. The Mini 40 doesn't offer their greater creative options, broader exposure range, self-timer, mode screen, longer battery life or even their tripod threads. So if you're after the best featured Instax Mini camera, then the 90 Neo Classic remains the one to beat, albeit of course at a higher price. Instead, the new Mini 40 is simply a repackaged Mini 11, sharing the exact same feature set, controls and quality. Place them side by side and you'll notice most of the key parts, panels and controls are also in exactly the same positions, although the 40 swaps the slightly bulbous grip of the 11 for a flat front surface. The 40 is basically for people who want a low-cost Instax Mini, but with a more serious look than the 11. Like earlier Instax cameras, the Mini 40 is extremely simple to use. Round the back you'll find a large door for loading film, although do check the window first for a yellow mark, which means you've already got a cartridge loaded. If you do, a counter towards the bottom right will tell you how many shots you have left. If the counter says S, you're safe to open the door and load a new cartridge. Just align the yellow mark on the cartridge with the one on the camera, push it inside, then close the door. Before you can take any photos with a new cartridge, you'll first need to eject the initial safety sheet. So just push the shutter button and it'll pop out. You can then throw this away. Now the counter on the rear will indicate that you have 10 shots remaining and you're good to go. If your prints are coming out blank, then the cartridge has already been mistakenly exposed to light. The Mini 40 inherits the simple optical viewfinder for composing when you're behind the camera or a small mirror to the left of the lens for selfies. This mirror was introduced on the Mini 9 and allows fairly effective aiming, but like all analog Instax cameras, do expect some inaccuracies, especially when using the viewfinder, particularly as you get closer to a subject. Meanwhile, the flash continues to fire with every shot. Like the 11 before it, the Mini 40 is powered by a pair of AA batteries housed in a compartment on the grip side and good for around 100 shots or 10 packs of film. My Mini 40 came with a pair of disposable alkalines. Meanwhile, a couple of small holes on the left and right sides allow you to either thread through the supplied hand strap or fit an optional and more traditional shoulder or neck strap. Sadly, there's still no tripod thread on this model, leaving that as a feature of the 70 and 90. Like all Instax mini cameras to date, the Mini 40 employs a 60mm lens, which on mini film delivers coverage equivalent to around 34mm, so that gives you mild wide angle, that's ideal for general use from portraits and selfies to buildings and landscapes. Again, like the Mini 11, you'll need to push a button in the corner to power on and extend the lens barrel for use. As standard, the lens can focus between about half a meter to infinity, but like the Mini 11, you can manually pull out the lens barrel a little more to enable the selfie mode with a closer focusing range of 30 to 50 centimeters, and that is much easier than having to remember the little lens accessory that came with the Mini 9. 
With the same insides, the Mini 40 also handles exposures in exactly the same way as the Mini 11. So the lens aperture remains fixed and the shutter speed automatically varies between 2 50th of a second and half a second. And that gives both models a broader range than the Mini 9, albeit lacking the slightly faster top speed of the Mini 70 and 90, or indeed the longer bulb exposures of the 90. The automatic exposure control of the Mini 40 and the 11 is much easier and more convenient than the earlier Mini 9, which just suggested an exposure with a light and expected you to manually twist the lens aperture ring to match. I don't want to do that, I want the camera to do it for me. But by inheriting the same exposure range of the Mini 11, the new Mini 40 will still find some conditions a little too bright, or indeed a little too dim to handle. Let me show you. To put the Mini 40 to the test, I hit the streets of Brighton taking a variety of indoor and outdoor shots. Here's what I got. As with older models, the Mini 40 excels with portraits, selfies or small group shots, and so long as the distance isn't too far from the camera, the built-in flash will provide sufficient illumination in dim conditions. It can be great fun at parties, events or just goofing around, with the high contrast, saturated colours and glossy finish evoking the vintage style of classic Polaroids. They can look great stuck to a pin board, on a fridge or hung from pegs, and they're also fun things to hand out to friends and family. The highly stylized process remains best suited to bold colours and clear details, and before long you'll get a good feel for what subjects work, and which ones don't. But with the same insides as the Mini 11, the 40 also inherits the same issues, most notably an inability to handle bright outdoor scenes due to a fairly modest, fastest shutter speed. Now I took these three images with the Mini 40 and while it was a fairly sunny day, it was only spring in the UK, not summer in more intense regions. It's frustrating to waste prints when they cost 75 cents or pence a throw. I dug out some older photos I took with the Mini 11 a year earlier and you can see how it suffers to the same degree under bright conditions. Now this could easily be solved with faster shutter speeds like the more expensive Mini 70 and 90 and I do really hope that Fujifilm equips the next budget Mini cameras with this capability. So like all the more affordable minis to date, there's a limited range of conditions when you can achieve a good looking print that's neither too bright and washed out or too dark and indistinct. The sweet spot again is for portraits or selfies at fairly close range and not under bright sunlight, where you can rely on the flash to provide the optimal lighting. Now your mileage may vary, but my favourite and most successful Instax photos are of people rather than places. It's all about learning what the camera can and can't do. Now, if you love the Instax process and style, there's two main decisions to make. The first is whether to stick with the classic mini shape or go for a camera that uses the larger square film cartridges. Now, the square prints may be the same height as the minis, but their square shape makes them look much larger overall, and I personally prefer this format. Note that the mini and square cameras cannot switch film types. If you like the look of Instax Square, I'd recommend the SQ6 camera, which not only resembles a huge Instagram logo, but also packs in greater control than the Mini 40. The second option is to ditch the unpredictability and limited exposure range of the Instax cameras for an Instax printer instead. I took all these images with other cameras and simply printed them using the Instax SP3 printer, which uses the Square Instax format. No surprises, no failed exposures, and the chance to enjoy photos with long or wild lenses, shallow depth of field effects, long exposures, or even retouched files. While this gives you the ultimate control and eliminates waste though, it also eliminates the fun of Instax cameras with their often unpredictable results and one-off nature. But ultimately, the decision is yours. Overall, the Instax Mini 40 brings the vintage style of the higher-end models to a lower price point, making it ideal for anyone who liked the idea of the Mini 11, but just didn't get on with its cuter appearance. But be in no doubt, the Mini 40 is simply a Mini 11 in a different coat, with both models sharing the exact same quality and features, which means inheriting the good and the bad. Like the Mini 11 before it, the 40 will overexpose on bright sunny days, and is most comfortable shooting people from close range. I'm disappointed Fujifilm didn't boost the fastest shutter speed to better cope with bright conditions, or even just fit something like a tripod thread for more flexibility, but these remain features reserved for higher end models like the 70 and 90. And while the new finish does look attractive, it's shiny plastic, not grippy rubber. Once you get over the fact the Mini 40 is basically a Mini 11 in hipster drag though, it remains equally fun to use. As always, the questions to ask yourself are whether you'd exploit the extended features of the 70 or 90, whether the square shape is more to your taste, and whether you'd prefer the predictability of a printer over that of a camera. 
For me, the sweet spot in the range remains the more capable SQ6 camera with better features and those square prints, but if you're simply after an affordable Instax mini camera with more serious looks than the 11, then the 40 could be for you. Meanwhile, if you simply want the most affordable Instax mini camera that's out there with a reasonable feature set, just go for the earlier 11 and embrace the cute styling and pastel colours. As always, there's links to check the latest prices below or to shout me a coffee if you found any of it useful. Please do subscribe if you find my reviews useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.